rolling. All right. So, in this video, we're going to show border molding. But before that, we need to make sure the trays are trimmed correctly. The characteristics we need to have on a tray is that they're thin. You know how when we were packing this part, you will end up with a thicker, thicker portion of this. So now it's got to be, you know, a good two millimeter long. It's always good to outline it like this, you know, and then from there, just make it thin. Make sure you copy your tissue stops right there, right? And the posterior seal. Whenever you go to your patient, Mr. Rodriguez, a dentist Rodriguez, right? You'll find that this falls short to the deep part of the vesicle. It falls short, about between three to five millimeters short. We're alleviating the frenums very well. And whenever you look at it from here, can you can you see the, the, the can you make a little close up right there? Mm -hmm. The tray is not touching at all the deepest part of the vestibule. Now, this is on a real patient. So we're gonna come here, make sure it's stable. Then we'll take a mirror and look into the vestibule and make sure everything is stable and short to it. Okay? This is the, the whole purpose for this. I'll keep it like there. If you see it where you mark the limits on your overextended model, it's always short. It's always short. As you look at this in the inside, you might be able to see where the wax relief was. And then a little step right there and then the limit of it okay so this is the characteristics we need to have also what I did is I went with with an acrylic burr block with an acrylic burr I kind of like show or grind that oxy oxygen inhibition layer now if I look at the lower one I just made it you will figure out this one does not have a metal handle. There's many ways to fabricate a lower one. And this one, it's very easy to take it on and off and also use it as a finger rest. So you can either do a metal, a metal uh, handle or you can just make something like we did here. Now, if you see this one, yes, yes. It'd be about the size of a occlusal rim that you're gonna make in a few sessions. Remember that word, occlusal rim. Now. In this case, if you see it here, can you make a close-up right there? Mm -hmm. It's completely overextended, right? It's, it's reaching the deepest part of it. So what I'll do... It's pretty thick also on this side here, you see? So I always like to point it out with maybe a Sharpie or something. So. I don't get lost looking at all this blue stuff in it, maybe. Get it right there, thank you. And something very important, remember in the back we were talking about the posterior palatal seal and the posterior... Can I get up in please? The posterior, the posterior portion of it, this is completely overextended, right? If you the see it there, pad. the retromolar pad, I'm, I mean. If I marked, as we mark the limits of it, Remember how we had it marked? So let me just remark it here for you guys. And like Dr. Van says, whenever we look into the mouth, right in front of us, we'll see two protuberances right here that will guide us, that will just guide us when we're setting up the teeth, okay? As far as for now, I want these custom tray 
covering all the way mm -hmm. to the back. All the way to the back. Okay, guys? So this one here, it's way overextended, right? So what do I do? The easiest thing to do is just mark it. Just mark where you need to trim. And remember, if you fall short a little bit in this, in this, um, in the tray, it's okay. Needs to be short. Remember, like on this case here, needs to be short. So I'm not gonna trim any more right there because I already have it short, right? So be mindful of that. I'm gonna trim this one, and then we'll go to the video. I have it nicely marked, and then we'll go to the video of border molding. Okay.